The first wild cap cut trick to help you go pro even faster is AI video. From this photo I took of my guitar on the wall with my iPhone, I was able to generate this video in a prompt and a few clicks. And there's a little more. Let me show you how to do that right now. This photograph is vertical. This is horizontal. To make it a little easier for CapCut's AI video generation, I wanted to make that a horizontal image without the background. It could work like this, but this just helps. So to do that, I just click on this guitar. I click on video, remove background. I click on auto removal and it cuts out the guitar. And I want to export this as a still image with no background, horizontal, a 16 by nine. So to do that, I right click on this. I choose create compound clip so it sees it as one landscape image that is 16 by 9 and then I click here in the top right and I choose export still frames give it a name and I hit export to create a video of that guitar that rotates in 3d space I simply click on media AI media and I go to AI video it'll default here on AI image we're gonna click on AI video you import the image that you just created I will grab it from right here in your free downloads by the way all of the elements I use in this video are available for free download in the link below. Plus, I'm going to include 100 free sound effects. Version 2, if you don't have version 2 yet, version 1's been out for a while, but version 2 is down there below. There's actually over 100 free sound effects. You want to download those as well. Now, let's go ahead and bring that guitar with no background into CapCut right here. And then we need to give it a prompt. Using ChatGPT, I had AI help me create a prompt that'll generate a cool video. It's this one right here. You can pause to read this if you want to. And I'm going to copy and paste that into here and then I just hit generate and when I'm done it'll kick out a video that looks just like this one right here including the sound effects and all of these lighting effects do you have any idea how complicated that would be for the 3D animators we had at the last place I worked to create that even in Hollywood like high-end tools it's crazy let me show you one other thing I created with AI video if you have a logo that you want to animate and make look super cool and professional I just took this coca-cola logo and using the same steps I just showed you I used this prompt right here you can stop the video if you want to read that and with that prompt I created this What? Out of thin air. CapCut made all of that, including the sound effects. Next, let me show you how to do fake camera movement. A lot of big creators do stuff like this. It's like a handheld camera. So I'm just gonna bring this clip of me. This is actually a clip of the end of my course. Edit with Trevin Master CapCut. You'll, you'll see this if you get the course, the whole thing. But I'm gonna turn the volume down right here boop, by just muting the track. So you can see here I am, it's just on a tripod. Wouldn't be cool if it looked like somebody was hand holding a camera. To do that, I just jump up here into effects and I type camera movement. You don't have to be all caps. And bam, you get this thing that says camera movement. I drop this thing right onto the clip. And because it is highlighted here, if it's not highlighted, you just click on this little star right here. So the camera movement thing is active. And by default, it looks like this. Not, you know, if you're doing some crazy stuff, it's fine. But for we want, we want to turn down the size, the glow, and the blur, and the strength. And get something you want. The speed you want to slow down a little bit. Maybe strength up a little. And you get something like this. What? Looks like somebody's hand holding a camera. While I have this clip in the timeline, let me show you how to do picture in picture. Like you're watching here, I'm in the corner of your screen half the time. Let me show you how to do that super easily in CapCut. We're going to use this same fake camera thing and drop another clip underneath it. How about this clip of naturally sailing? Here's a sailboat, boom. And I'm just gonna trim it up, use the part that I want. I'm gonna hit the letter W to delete all of that. By the way, Shift Z shows the whole timeline, more sailing than I need. Position the playhead where I want to trim the rest and I will add an edit and delete all that by hitting the letter what? W. Then Shift Z to fill the frame again. And I'm gonna turn off the audio so you don't hear. You'll have to just wonder what it is. Or if you download the free elements, you'll hear what I say here. It's so important. And so here I am full frame, but what if I wanted to be the little picture in picture like you see right now? I'm just gonna add a cut right here and add a cut right here and have this be the picture in picture part where I'm talking about sailing. So to do that, make sure the clip is highlighted. I go to video, 
mask and I click on add mask. I choose any of these shapes and a mask just allows you to select a portion of the video and leave the rest blank so you can see what's behind it. So we'll do rectangle and I'm going to just use these little handles here to make it bigger like that and like this and put me up here. And I have this icon here that allows me to round the corners a little bit. So I'm just going to click on this and drag it up. So it adds, you know, a little more flair to it. To move this somewhere useful, you think you would just click and drag this. But if you do that, it's just moving the mask. We don't want to move the mask. We want to move this entire thing. So I just click on video basic and now I can move this and we can put it up here. Here, and we can click here and resize it and bam it's up there in the corners and you see what I'm talking about and it looks like this so I go from full frame to bam I'm up here talking in the corner and back to full frame again have you seen those videos from the likes of Vox and Johnny Harris where they highlight text? Super easy to do in CapCut. Go ahead and grab this newspaper article included in your free downloads. And we're just gonna scale it up a tiny bit so we can find something that we want to highlight. And notice that this is a newspaper article from what is that, 1932? Holy cow, that's old, it's older than me. We're gonna highlight this line right here. And to have more precision control over it, I'm going to zoom in on it using this little zoom wheel right here, bam. And then to get up to the area we want to highlight, I'm gonna click on this little blue square here and it puts it right where I can see it and it gives me access to it. Before I start highlighting this, I want this newspaper to be a little more contrasty so the highlighter stands out more because we're gonna highlight it with this yellow and this is kind of yellowish and it'll make this hard to see. So to do that, we're just going to make sure we have the newspaper highlighted. We click on adjust and we're gonna go down here to temp and make the temperature a little less yellow, a little more blue. So I'm gonna just drag this this way a little bit and then I'm gonna bump the exposure up a tiny bit and drag highlights up a little bit and whites up a little bit. So the whites are a little whiter, the blacks are a little blacker. I think that looks pretty great. It looks like an old newspaper, but now it's gonna be a little bit easier to see and read. Next, I'm gonna drag this yellow highlight JPEG onto this clip and then we're gonna position it over everything and we're going to make sure it's highlighted in the timeline. We wanna be able to see through it so we can draw a over it, the area we're gonna highlight, you should select video, basic, and go down to blend, and just turn the opacity down about halfway so you can see what's going on. Next, we're gonna go to video mask, and click add mask, and click the pen tool so that we can draw the shape we want. Now, we could use a square, a rectangle for this, and position it over there and scale it the right amount, but we're gonna do something that makes it a little more interesting. We're going to just click and draw around this, and it doesn't have to be perfect. We want it to look like a real highlighter, not just like a straight line. So we're gonna do it you know, a little bit rough so it feels natural, like this. And bam, that looks pretty darn good. Next, we wanna go back to basic and turn the opacity all the way back up so we can see what's going on. Then we want to make this into a compound clip so we can add another mask that we can animate. So I'll just right click it and choose create compound clip. And I'll jump back over here to video mask and I'll click add mask and I will choose split. And it's hard to see where that guy is because this is white, but it's right. Then you want to go back down here to this magnifying glass and click on this line so it zooms out and we can see the mask. And we're going to flip it over like that. Have it at 90 degrees. Come on, baby, log in. And we're gonna move it over here to the left a little bit. We're gonna position our playhead, I don't know, somewhere around right here. I don't want this to start highlighting right away. I wanna wait about that long, actually maybe more about that long. We're about 18 frames in before it starts to animate so we can see this full newspaper. Maybe we add some motion later. And then I'm going to click over here under position and set a keyframe. Remember, a keyframe marks the beginning or the end of a change in a property. And the property we're changing is the position of this mask. And I'm going to feather it a little bit by clicking this guy here. That's gonna add a little feather so it looks more natural. And I'm going to move the playhead forward, I don't know, about this far for it to highlight from here to here. And I'll drag this over and bam, we highlight the whole thing from this this point to this point and it looks like this. That's, I like that speed. If you wanted to go faster, you would just move this keyframe closer like this. And if you wanted to go slower, you'd move the keyframe farther away like this. Bam. For me, I like it, I don't know, right around here. And that looks great, but I can't see the text. How do I do that? I go back to video basic and I select the mode as multiply. And now, bam, you can see right through. It looks like really natural. Look at this. What? That looks really good. Now we want to add a little bit of motion to this really easily. So I select both of these clips. I right click and I choose create compound clip or a sub clip. And by the way, in the past, you can only have one compound clip. You couldn't nest clip after clip, but now you can. So thank you CapCut for that update. And to make this move a little bit, we just want to go to 
animation. Make sure you have combo selected. Any of these would work with this, but some will work better than others. Let's go ahead and scroll down and find one called Funhouse. And if you don't find Funhouse, try some others. They're constantly changing, updating, removing these, so you may or may not have that. Also, the effects vary by region as well. So if you don't see it, don't freak out. There's other things that'll work. This one I like, I'm gonna click on it and see what it does. I really like that. I might want to make it longer for use in real life so you have time to read it, but look what it did. If I just scroll through it slowly, it's kind of got a cool curvy angle going on right when it's highlighting it, and bam. What do you think? Pretty fancy for a free editing program. If you like the way I teach and learning how to edit with me in the corner of your screen like you just saw, you're going to love my course, Edit with Trev and Master CapCut version 2, which just launched. In my course, the very best beginning editor program on the planet, you can learn everything you know in CapCut to make epic stuff. If you're serious about learning to edit, click on the link right, right there or right there or go to mastercapcut.com. I can't wait to see you inside the course. The fifth wild CapCut trick to help you go pro is how to make a photo come to life without using AI. You want to maintain the integrity of the photo, but make it more interesting to watch so it's not just a static photo. To do that, let's bring some photos to the timeline. If you haven't downloaded all of the assets and my 100 free sound effects, it's actually 120 something free sound effects, go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to select these four photos, bring them to the timeline, and show you how to do this really, really easily. These photos are from a trip we took to Ireland a while ago. You're welcome to use them and all the assets for anything that you want, except the Coca-Cola logo because I don't have, you know, I don't know the copyright to that one. But let's go ahead and start by clicking on this first one, Ireland one. I'm gonna scale it up to, I don't know, like 110% maybe. And what we want it to do is just slightly move and blur its way into the scene. To do that, I'm going to click and drag it to the starting position. I'm gonna make sure that my playhead is on the very first frame. And I'm gonna click in the middle of this and drag it down until the top locks right there. And next I'm going to add a keyframe for this position because we're gonna have it like glitch up a little bit. So I'm just gonna click on transform which sets keyframes for all of these main properties, scale, position, and rotate. I'm gonna go forward, I don't know, four frames, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna just drag it up a little bit until we get to the bottom of the frame, and that looks like this. It adds a little bit of motion to get us in there, but it would be more interesting if it blurred its way in too. So we're gonna go over to Effects and type in the word blur. We're gonna take this blur, drag it to the timeline, and make it last as long as these keyframes, and I'm gonna zoom in so I can see how long they last, like droop. And you know, I could do it like this, which would be okay, but it would be cool if it started blurry and then got less blurry until it was clear. So we'll set a keyframe for blur at, I don't know, 100. Let's do that. Set the keyframe here. Go forward to the end of this. And the way I did that, I used the down arrow and then I go back one frame because if you go to the very end, it's off of it. You have to go back one frame with the left arrow. I'll drag the blur down to zero. And now this looks like this. So that's kind of cool. It's interesting. It's more fun to look at. And next we want it to keep moving through the end of the clip. So we want to zoom in on, you know, whatever's interesting. Maybe we're zooming in on this building in the background a little bit. So we can kind of focus on that. So I'm going to go to the last keyframe here. Remember the down arrow and back one frame. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit, just bump the scale another 10% or so. And then I'm going to position it here so that, you know, it's trying to focus on this building in the background. That looks like this. And in my book, stuff is moving too far and too fast. So what you want to do is position your playhead on the last keyframe and just have it not move quite as much and maybe not zoom in as much. So I'll just change that to 115 and I will decrease the amount of motion a little bit so it's not going as far as by dragging it back to closer to where it was to begin with. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, not, not bad at all. Now one thing we do to smooth that out a little bit more is just to add a curve. And a curve makes the movements less linear. Instead of so jarring, ch -ch -ch, you, you add a curve to the properties that we modified. And we modified scale and position. We didn't rotate it. Position as an X and a Y coordinate. So we're gonna right click on this guy, choose show variable speed animation or hit option key on your keyboard. And we're just gonna click on these middle keyframes. So for the x-axis, I'll click on this guy and I will choose not a linear curve, but rather an auto curve. I click on this guy and this only works if this keyframe is highlighted. So I click on here, boom, it adds a curve, added some handles. I'm gonna click on the Y, click on this bar right here so I can see it and make sure it's highlighted by clicking on it. And I'll click on an auto curve for that. And let's see what that looks like. 
Yeah, that looks more interesting. With this highlighted, I want to close these graphs by clicking Option K on a Mac or Alt K on a PC. And next, we're going to just do one more thing to make this a little more interesting. We're going to go over to Effects and we're going to type in Noise. And we have Black Noise here, which is kind of super cool and adds this little element of dynamicness, if that's a word. And I'll make it last for all of these. I'm going to show you one more trick. So how much more interesting is that? Now, the cool thing is we don't have to redo everything we did with this image. As long as these are all the same size, and they are, I can just copy and paste these attributes to all of them so we can have really cool animations for all of our still images at once. So I right click, I choose copy attributes. I select all of these guys and I choose paste attributes. And all of these things will work. I click paste, and then I can see that I've got keyframes for all of them. What I don't have yet is the blur for all of them, so I'm going to click on this, hit copy, hit my down arrow twice. The down arrow goes to the next edit. I'm about to point with my finger, no, with the mouse. This is the next edit right there. So if I hit down once, it goes there. Hit down again, it goes there. Then I just hit paste. Boom, paste, down, down, paste. And now I've got that blur thing for all of them. And the only thing we're really missing now is a sound effect. You did download my hundred and something free sound effects, right? Version two. Go back to media and, oh, did I not import my sound effects? Yes, I did. There they are. I'm just going to search for, I don't know, how about a click? And there's what you get these free camera clicks. You get a whole bunch of them right here. Let's go ahead and drop in the timeline so we can find a click we like. I think I liked this one. I heard this already. I think I liked this one. Yeah, that's, that's great. So I'm just going to type the letter Q to trim all that out. Drag this to the beginning here and see if this times out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. So let's just copy and paste that for all of them. And this is, by the way, it's camera shutter click. And copy, paste. Command C to copy, V to paste. And then another down arrow, one, two, three times. Command V or Control V on a PC. Paste. One, two, three times. Paste. And now let's watch our final masterpiece. Click. Beautiful. Look at those black specks. Look at that motion. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. <gasps> and we could have modified the keyframes on these other ones if we wanted them to move slightly differently, zoom in on a different part, or scale differently, but it worked out really well with the default copy and paste animation that we did from this first clip. Come here. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that that close. Back up a little bit. There are 10 mistakes you are probably making in every single video. You need to watch this video right here so you stop making those mistakes. And of course, you know, buy, buy my course so you will never make a mistake ever, ever again.